Well, hello again, children. I bet you can probably tell who this is here because I think you probably recognise my voice. And I'll see you in a minute. But first of all, I want to show you what I've got here. Because our story today takes place in and around a city. A city in Jesus' time that was completely surrounded by a wall, a stone wall. And as you can see, there's a way into the city. But in actual fact, this gateway was the only way that you could get into the city. And obviously it was then the only way you could get out of the city. But people would go in through this door, through this gateway, and you can see their houses, lots of stones, lots of boulders, lots of palm trees. But whoever went in there had to come out exactly the same way. And people lived there and worked there and they grew things and they lived very comfortably. So, because our story takes place some of the time in the city, but some of the time on the way to the city, I'm now going to tell you the story. Well, hello again. Now I think I'm ready to tell you the story. Now the story takes place in a city, but not this city. It takes place in a city quite a long way away from this one, which is Damascus. It takes place in a city called Jerusalem. Now I'm sure you remember that Jerusalem was the big city where Jesus was killed. But even after he died, a lot of people, either his disciples or other friends that he had, or people who'd started to believe in his message, carried on preaching the good news that Jesus had told, all about the love of God. And a lot of people didn't like this at all, because they were afraid that this message would sort of corrupt their own faith, get people confused, not know what to believe. And so anybody who was a strict Jew would not want to listen to anything about Jesus. Now, one day, one of Jesus's followers, a man named Stephen, was preaching the good news to people in Jerusalem when the, the crowd turned very angry. They wanted to get rid of him. They wanted him out of there. So they started shouting at him, go away, go away. And of course he didn't go. So then they started uh, sh hurling insults at him, saying what he was saying was a lot of rubbish. And still, that didn't stop him. Eventually they got so angry that they started pushing and shoving him. Did that stop him? No. Eventually, Somebody bent down and picked up a stone and threw it as hard as he could at Stephen. And it hit him on the shoulder and it really, really hurt. Did that stop Stephen? No. Eventually, people picked up bigger and bigger stones and one of them hit him right on the face. And soon blood was pouring down and it was very painful. Did that stop him? No. Soon people were picking up bigger and bigger and bigger rocks and throwing them at Stephen. And they were hitting him. One hit him in his eye, one hit him on his shoulder, one on his leg, one on his knee. And before long, poor Stephen was getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And even when he was lying down on the ground, so weak he couldn't get up, still they kept throwing stones at him. And eventually he died. Now you think the people would be really sorry that it had gone that far, but no, they were pleased. And one man who was particularly pleased was a man whose name was Saul. And Saul had determined that he wanted to stamp out 
all the messages is about Jesus. So when he saw what had happened, he clapped the men who'd done it and said, well done, congratulations, you've killed off one of Jesus' followers. That's not very nice at all, is it? But Saul decided he was going to make that his work. His job was going to be to go around, find anybody who was preaching the message of Jesus and have them either beaten or thrown into prison, or if that didn't stop them, have them killed. Now he'd heard that there were a lot of Jesus' followers in this city here, Damascus. So he decided that he would go to Damascus armed with some warrants for their arrest so that he could go in and say, I arrest you and take them back to Jerusalem. Here he is. This is Saul. This is Saul. And with him, one of his friends who too wanted to kill off Jesus' followers. And as they were walking along the road towards Damascus, suddenly a bright light shone in the sky. So bright that Paul straight away put his arms in front of his eyes like that. What is it, he said, who's there, who's there? And a voice said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Why are you out to get me? Why do you want to keep hurting my friends? A poor Saul didn't, didn't know where the voice had come from. And he said, who is it? Who is it, master? Because he knew it must be somebody very important to be able to talk to him like that. And the voice said, it's me, it's Jesus. I've come to tell you, I don't want you persecuting me anymore. And in that moment, Saul suddenly realised that all the things he'd been saying about Jesus were wrong. Jesus was somebody very special. Jesus, well, he must be the son of God if he could shine like a bright light. Now, the funny thing was, his friend didn't see the light. He heard the voices, but he didn't see the light. So when the light gradually faded, when Saul opened his hands, he realised he couldn't see. He couldn't see anything at all. He was blinded by the light. His friends, they couldn't work out what had happened. Who was that talking to you? Who was it? And Paul said, I must go, I must go into Damascus, I must go, I must go. And so his friends had to lead him carefully through the gate into Damascus. And do you remember there's only one way in, so there would only be one way out. But in they went, in they went. Now, Saul was in a bit of a muddle now because, um, well, originally his friends were the people who wanted to kill off the followers of Jesus. But now Saul didn't belong to that group. He suddenly wanted to begin belong to the group that were talking about Jesus. So it was a bit of a puzzle for him. Where could he go to be safe? Well, eventually... One of the followers of Jesus, I think God told him, go and meet this man, Saul, and look after him. So that's what happened. He took him to a house where he would be safe. His friends, they still went off trying to uh, search for the followers of Christ. And of course, soon it became known that Saul had turned to be a different person. You may have heard me on a couple of occasions accidentally call him by a different name. Did you hear what it was I called him? I sometimes accidentally said, Paul. And you know a lot about Paul, don't you? You've heard stories about Paul and the wonderful things that he did. 
but at this stage he was a beginner. He hadn't learned very much about Jesus, but for the time that he spent in Damascus, where he couldn't see, he spent a lot of time praying. And soon he began to understand more and more of what Jesus' message was all about. Now, Saul, or Paul as we can call him, he didn't want to stay in Damascus forever. But of course, the authorities now were chasing him and he needed to hide. And if he tried to leave the city of Damascus, well, do you remember? There was only one way in, so there was only one way out. And the authorities knew this, so they very cleverly said, look, it's silly chasing Paul from, from room to room and house to house. He can't get out except through the gate, so why don't we just put guards on the gate? And that's what they did. They put one guard there, and they put one guard there. So they knew that if Paul or Saul tried to escape, they could capture him. Now this was a problem because Paul didn't want to stay in Damascus. He wanted to go back to Jerusalem. He wanted to meet up with Jesus' disciples and explain to them that he'd had a complete change of heart that no longer was he their enemy, but he was their friend. How were they going to get him out of the city without the guards seeing him? Well, eventually they put their heads together and they had a look all the way around the city walls. But they knew that on the other side of the city walls, there were lots of rocks. And if you tried to climb the wall and jump off, <gasps> If you landed on some of those rocks, they needed to think of a way of getting Saul out of the city without his being hurt. And eventually, they came up with a really good idea. Do you remember I said that people lived in the city and they grew things? And one of the things that they grew was grain to make their bread. And they kept the grain in great big baskets. Now I've made a little basket here and these were big. So what they did was they said, they said to Paul, Paul Saul, get inside the basket. So he did. And then between them, lots of them, they, they lugged the basket up the stones, up the rocks, and eventually they rested it on the top of the wall. Now, Paul was a bit frightened at this point because if they let go, he'd fall and land on the rocks. But very carefully, very carefully, they lowered him down bit by bit, bit by bit, until he landed safely on the rocks below. Then he was able to climb out of the basket and of course he didn't go back that way. He went the long way home, back to Jerusalem. And so the guards still stood out there. They didn't know that he's escaped. Well, I think I said a couple of weeks ago, Paul had such a lot of adventures and often his life was in danger. Do you remember he was shipwrecked? And do you remember he suffered in, a, in an earthquake when the prison walls broke down? And now he's had to escape in a basket. All these things happened to him because he was determined to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He put his life in danger. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the story. Um, I'm sure you've got some bricks at home. You've probably got some Lego. I think you could probably make a city. And um, well, I'll let you into a little secret. I made my basket out of blue tack. I'm sure you've got something that you could use. I hope you have fun trying to reenact the story of Saul, who became Paul, who started as an enemy of Jesus Christ and ended up as a real friend. Bye bye. See you again soon. <laughs>